This story is brought to you by The Month of Lurv. The Month of Lurv! Part 2 Throughout spring, Ponyville had become a hub of hustle and bustle for out-of-towners on their way to or from Canterlot. Despite the short walk to the capital, ponies came from miles around to spend the night in Ponyville. As the spring faded into summer, the visitors from out of town began to wane, and Ponyville again became the sleepy village it had always been. The business owners of Ponyville were sad to see the ponies and their bits go, but they were thankful that the work had returned to a normal pace. It was about a week after every pony had left that the mail orders began rolling in to again fill the registers of Ponyville businesses. Flush with bits, Bon Bon opted to expand her candy shop by adding a new wrapping machine. In doing so, she found that she cut her finishing time by a quarter. By lowering her prices, she made even more by selling sweets at a discount rather than she had at full price. Sure, she was busier than ever, and maybe she had overextended herself a hair, but if her math was right, it would all be worth it. Lyra, too, had become unusually busy in the past few months with demands for her performances coming from all over Equestria. While she was happy to be performing in so many new places and in front of so many new ponies, she was forced to leave Bon Bon behind to travel to far-off places. After all, there was a candy shop to run and a home to maintain. The past few months had left them strangers passing in the night, but much like a treat delayed, it made the time they spent together that much sweeter. Miss Bon Bon? came a lispy voice from the kitchen. Bon Bon snapped from her thoughts and turned to face the curly-haired filly. Your taffy is burning. Oh, that's silly, Twist, said Bon Bon. I took the taffy off the stove an hour ago and... She looked above Twist to see that her taffy puller vibrated with an alarming grind. The taffy itself was engulfed in flames, scorching the metal frame of the machine. Bon Bon dashed to grab the fire extinguisher off the wall. She turned the canister over a few times in her hooves before pulling the pin. The crackle of freezing taffy and the hiss of frigid gas drowned the shrieking of the smoke detector in the background. Bonbon bon stared at the machine in disbelief. Her perfect safety record lay ruined by a faulty puller, and now an entire day's worth of work lay in a burnt and frozen mess. She slammed the fire extinguisher to the ground and let loose a torrent of profanity. What does the horn polishing son of a nag mean, Miss Bonbon? Bonbon bit her tongue and put a hoof to her mouth. She had forgotten Twist was still standing there. She turned to her assistant with a weak smile. Nothing, dear, said Bonbon. Bon. Have some sweets and go home. Please don't tell your mother I said any of that. Twist only shrugged and helped herself to some licorice whips on her way out the door. Bon Bon wiped a bead of sweat from her brow and stared at the puller in disbelief. There was no way for it to fail like that, and she hadn't done anything different from the last time she had used it. The puller had been working fine on the other day, and now it was completely destroyed. She kicked the machine with another burst of obscenities. This nightmare, combined with the expenses of her minor expansion, meant even less for the wedding fund. Their joint account was already dangerously low on bits because Lyra hadn't gotten paid in two months and they had been living day to day on the candy shop's profits. Bonbon bon only hoped they had enough to cover their mortgage until Lyra got paid. And then Bonbon bon starts screaming at Mom and Dad and scares them halfway back to Canterlot, said Lyra. My word, said Caesar. The little candy maker is quite the ball of fire. That's why I love her, said Lyra. I know you don't care for her because she's a commoner, but she makes me happy. That's really all that matters, said Caesar. I've already gotten quite a few nasty letters from some of the upper castes about the whole thing. One of them even tried to set me up on a date with blue blood. She shook her head. I'm really kind of surprised that you of all ponies aren't up in arms about the whole commoner thing. Caesar chuckled. Oh, I got over that a long time ago, said Caesar. It really doesn't matter now. Those aristocratic twits are just hanging on the last vestiges of power before they're swept away into the dustbin of history. At least the younger generation has a choice of who they choose to spend their lives with. Even if your bonbon bon is a commoner and a mayor, wherever you find love is just fine with me. You sure you don't want an invitation? asked Lyra. We'd be honored to have you here. <laughs> no, I'm afraid I really can't, said Caesar. I'm off as an envoy to the Griffinlands for the next few months. He put a hoof to his head and, with a dramatic sigh, looked at the ceiling. Oh, such is the trappings of the upper echelons of the nobility, my dear Lyra. Be glad you're not a part of them. 
He flashed a winning smile and stood to greet the gray earth pony that had just come to join them. My lord, said the pony, Princess Celestia requests your presence at the castle this evening. Very good, said Caesar. Would you care to join me, Lyra? I'm sure the Princess Celestia would be more than happy to meet a musician of your caliber. I appreciate the offer, said Lyra, but a friend of mine is waiting for me just a couple blocks away at the Palace Shadow Cafe. Very well, then, said Caesar. I look forward to making sure you get paid properly. I haven't any idea why your checks have been getting delayed, and with the wedding I'm sure you're going to need every last bit. The two nobles walked through the majestic halls of Caesar's manor, along with the staring eyes of a hundred pony portraits. Lyra felt as if they were all watching her and judging with their painted stares. She turned away from their unmoving gaze and tried to ignore them as they approached the foyer. No matter what, don't let those nobles get you down, said Caesar. Look at these portraits. They're all miserable because they had arranged marriages to ponies they hated. What you have is true love, and that is a miracle. Anyone who tries to tell you otherwise is an unhappy fool with an axe to grind. Lyra walked away from Caesar's estate happier than she had been in weeks. The pep talk had left her with a clear head and a warm smile. Of all the ponies she could have asked for advice in dealing with nobility, Caesar was the one she knew would give her the straightest answers. After a short walk, Lyra came to a small cafe along the streets of Canterlot. Soups and sandwiches floated in the air as unicorns snacked on their midday meals. A grey earth pony sat near the kitchen, trying to grab the attention of any waiter to no avail. They simply walked by her, their platters of sandwiches floating on trays before them. Lyra trotted over to the pony and stood at her table. Hi, Tavi. Oh, thanks, Celestia, you're here, said Octavia. I've been waiting for half an hour, and I haven't even seen a waiter so much as slow down. She shook a hoof at a passing waiter. I've got money too, you jerks. My bits spend the same as any pony else's. You just don't know how to flag someone down in this joint, said Lyra. Allow me. Lyra stuck her hoof out from beneath the table to catch the leg of a passing waiter. The waiter flailed, trying to keep his balance. The tray wobbled in the air and clattered to the mayor's table. Octavia raised a brow at Lyra, who had already started eating. What? asked Lyra with a mouthful of sandwich. Mm, it's legit. She turned to the waiter, who had started to pick himself up off the ground. Two glasses of tea for us, thanks. She turned back to Octavia. Anyway, I asked you here to give you your invitation. Lyra floated a heart-shaped piece of dark chocolate from her bag. The wrapper was cleverly embossed with hearts, and underneath, imprinted on the candy, was the date of the wedding and all the relevant information a pony would need to attend. Octavia looked at the invitation, then back to Lyra. You're kidding me said Octavia. It's an adorable idea, but how am I supposed to not eat this? Well, the wrapper is also an invitation, said Lyra. So, unless you eat that too. You two are the most nauseatingly adorable couple in Equestria, said Octavia. Why can't I meet a nice young stallion who will sweep me off my feet and shower me with candy? Because the ratio of mares to stallions is something like eight to one, said Lyra. Don't worry, Tavi. Your soulmate is out there. Maybe if you got out of the house more often, you'd find him. Or her. Lyra affixed with a sly grin. Maybe you'll meet some pony at the wedding. After you're done performing, of course. You want my ensemble to perform at your wedding? Asked Octavia. I'm so honored that you'd consider us. I just figured you'd do it on the cheap, said Lyra. Octavia answered by throwing a roll at her friend. So that's a yes? Of course, said Octavia. I know you've been having money troubles recently, so consider it a wedding gift. Lyra looked down at her sandwich with an embarrassed blush. I didn't think any pony knew about that, she said. We all know about it, said Octavia. I know you got stiffed for your last six concerts. That's got every pony worried that they're not going to get paid either. Octavia looked over her shoulder, then back at Lyra. If you need money... I can't borrow anything from you, said Lyra. That's the fastest way to lose a friend. Forever, shouted Pinkie Pie. Lyra nearly flipped backward over her cushion at the sudden appearance of her wedding planner. She sat wheezing on the floor as Pinkie's thousand-watt smile beamed down upon her like a spotlight of maniacal hope. Where did you come from? asked Octavia. 
Well, when a mommy pony and a daddy pony love each other very much, Pinky started. Octavia only sighed and helped Lyra back to her feet. I was making a delivery in Canterlot, and then I was going to go to some of the wedding shops here to get some more ideas. Then I saw you two in the window, and... I can't believe she hired you, said Octavia. Well, duh, said Pinky. She tussled Octavia's ebony mane. I'm the best at parties. Why wouldn't she hire me? You could start by not scaring the living daylights out of me, muttered Lyra. I was getting ready to head back to Ponyville. Would you care to walk with me? Oh, that sounds like super fun, said Pinky. I can tell you all the great ideas I've been having for your wedding. You should invite more people. Why not every pony here? She stood on the back hooves and bellowed to the restaurant, Hey, every pony who wants to come to a wedding! Lyra grabbed Pinky by the scruff of her neck and forced her onto a nearby cushion. Pinky opened her mouth to protest but was met with a hoof full of bread. Despite the mouthful of bread, she continued to try to expound on the virtues of attending the biggest wedding in Ponyville history. I'm sure all these classy ponies wouldn't want anything to do with a little old Ponyville wedding, said Lyra. So let's not bother them and head home instead, shall we? The message seemed to dawn on Pinkie Pie as the crowd stared at the two ponies. She nodded and swallowed her bread. I'll see you later, Tavi, said Lyra. Say goodbye, Pinkie Pie. Goodbye, Pinkie Pie. That's funny, said Pokey. The reservations that had arrived in the mail earlier that day floated to the schedule book he kept on the back wall. Pokey scanned between the two. He grumbled a bit and tossed the paper to the side. A knock on the door distracted him from the book. The door opened to reveal Carrot Top, all smiles and curls, wheeling a crate full of carrots. Pokey floated the reservation up to her face. Does this say what I think it does? asked Pokey. Carrot Top looked at the slips for a moment, then over them at Pokey. You really should learn to read better one of these days, said Carrot Top. But it appears that you've overbooked yourself for the third weekend in August. According to these reservations, you've got six catering contracts for that day, not including Lyra's wedding. Look at the numbers, said Pokey. They're offering me triple what I normally charge. The reservation floated back down to the scheduling book. I'd be stomping my own hoof if I turned down one of these for Lyra's wedding, and it's not as if she actually booked me for that day. I mean, she hasn't put a deposit down, and she did say she might have to make payments. He looked over his books again. Carrot Top, what should I do? Seriously? asked Carrot Top. You can't be considering canceling on the wedding. Think of how disappointed Lyra will be if her favorite chef isn't there, with all their favorite dishes. Think about how disappointed she'll be if you're not there to see her and Bon Bon get married. There's no way you should let a little thing like money get in the way of friendship. Pokey hoofed at the ground with a guilty cough. Well, that's just it, said Pokey. I kind of need the money. Not her again, groaned Carrot Top. You've got to stop loaning Trixie money. I know she's your sister and all, but she never pays you back. Heck, even when she was in town a couple weeks ago, what did she do? She ate at your restaurant, she parked her wagon on your lawn, and then she left the remains of it for you to clean up. Carrot Top hefted the crate of carrots to her back and came inside. Look, I've got a deadbeat uncle who does the same thing. Breezes into town, eats all my food, and leaves a mess for me to clean up. I mean, Derpy does that already. It's not like she needs the help. She threw open the walk-in refrigerator to find a gray pegasus standing behind the door. With a shriek, the crate crashed from Carrot Top's back, spilling carrots all over the floor. Carrot Top pinned herself to the wall, clutching her chest. Derpy's saddlebags overflowed with vegetables and sauce containers. She pointed to the empty shelving. I emptied your fridge, she said. Why in the name of Equestria is Derpy in your refrigerator? demanded Carrot Top. She's delivering leftovers to the school, said Pokey. Thanks, Derpy. Be sure to take some muffins for yourself and Dinky. The carrots floated from the floor to the sink and with a wave of Pokey's horn. Look, Trixie is family, continued Pokey. And where I come from, you don't abandon your family. Carrot Top only moaned in aggravation. Talking to you is like pounding your head into a wall, said Carrot Top. You are the most bull-headed stallion I've ever met. You never give up on anything, even if it's a lost cause. Your sister, your job, your various failed relationships. Did you need something, or are you going to just berate me for my life choices? Asked Pokey. Carrot Top paused a moment. 
Actually, there was something else, said Carrot Top. Pinky wanted us all to meet this evening around 11 to discuss plans for the wedding. Something about reservations. Barry will bring the wine if you'll be so kind as to bring the snacks. Got it, said Pokey. Anything else? Carrot looked around a moment. She started to say something but stopped herself. She shook her head and held a hoof to her lips. I'll tell you later, she mumbled. Remember, 11 o'clock, Sugar Cube Corner. As Carrot Top's cart rolled away from the Balloon Cafe, she paused to glance inside the majesty that was Carousel Boutique. Inside, Rarity hummed to herself while Sweetie Belle scribbled something on a scroll. Surrounding the sisters was a pile of orders and finished garments that had poured in over the past few weeks. The last of the dresses floated into its box. And done, said Rarity. A handkerchief floated to dab a drop of glistening sweat from her brow. Are you finished with those numbers, Sweetie Belle? Almost, said Sweetie Belle. She tapped a pencil against her chin for a moment before turning back to her sister. I give up. What's a four-letter word for a baby horse? The handkerchief fell to the ground and Rarity looked down at the scroll her little sister was writing on. The crossword puzzle was mostly filled in, though most of the simpler words had been left blank. Rarity simply shook her head and trotted to her register. Never mind then, said Rarity. She looked over a few receipts as they floated from the register. That was the last of the paid orders. Now I can get started on the unpaid ones. Now if I could just find Lyra's order... Oh, Miss Bonbon stopped by earlier today and asked if she could have some more time to pay for their dresses, said Sweetie Belle. She said something about a taffy puller and she was covered in soot. Rarity stared at her sister for a moment, trying to decide whether or not to believe her. I'm going to run down to Bonbon's, she said after a moment. Look after any customers for me, would you? Sweetie Belle only nodded as she continued her crossword. The sun beat down upon the streets of Ponyville, bringing with it the familiar warmth of summer and a glisten to Rarity's mane. She walked through the city center and towards the candy shop. Bon Bon wasn't known for being tardy with payments, and although she rarely purchased anything from Carousel Boutique, her good credit had been widely accepted all over town. Rarity rounded the alley to find Bon Bon dragging a scorched piece of machinery from her kitchen. The machine flipped end over end into the alleyway just ahead of Rarity's hooves. Bonbon bon dented the machine's cover with a swift kick before unleashing a verbal tirade that left Rarity's jaw slack in horror. Bonbon bon reared back to kick the machine again when she noticed Rarity standing there in shock. Bonbon bon dropped back to her hooves. Oh, didn't see you there, said Bonbon bon with a weak smile. Um, wonderful afternoon we're having, isn't it? Rarity's eyes glanced at the battered machine, then back to Bonbon. Bon. Can I get you something? Peppermint stick? Lemon drop? I'm afraid fresh taffy is out of the question because of this. She kicked the machine again. Fucking thing's broken. Rarity took a step back from the mare. Bonbon bon was known for her sweet nature but relatively short fuse, and it appeared that whatever that thing was that she was kicking had set her off. Bonbon's bon mane, normally curled and elegant despite her long hours in the kitchen, now resembled a pink and indigo rat's nest of tangles and taffy. I can see this isn't a good time, said Rarity. I'll just come back and... No, no, please, come in, said Bonbon. Bon. Let me get you some coffee and something sweet. My coffee maker still works. She glared into her kitchen with eyes twitching. At least it had better be working. The gurgle of brewing coffee was the only healthy sound coming from the kitchen as the two mares entered. Half of the electrical appliances were sparking like some sort of vicious Tesla coil, while the other half were smoking craters of wires and enamel. A pile of discarded fire extinguishers littered the kitchen floor, and several large wrenches hung from the pipes along the ceiling. With a shaking hoof, Bonbon bon poured cups of coffee for herself and Rarity. Had some trouble in here today, she said. Seems like everything's gone on the fritz at once. She giggled with a sort of nervous laughter as she spooned sugar into her mug. When the stove started shooting flames at the ceiling, I figured it was probably a good idea to call it quits for the day. She continued to spoon sugar as she talked. But other than that, it's been great. I mean, I have to basically replace every piece of equipment I have, and I'm going to be closed for a few days for repairs, but I can handle it. I I'll be fine. Her cup overflowed with sugar. Just fine. Sugar in your coffee? Um, none, thank you, said Rarity, eyeing Bonbon's sugar-filled mug. I came to ask you about your dress, but I think... Ah, uh, 
Yeah, said Bon Bon, taking a sip. All um. She looked down at her mug, then back at Rarity as tears filled her eyes. I'm so sorry, Rarity, sobbed Bon Bon. I'll get you your bits as soon as I can. It's just, I sank everything I had into expanding because we were doing so well. Bits were rolling in and I thought we had enough for it all. But Lyra hasn't gotten paid in months despite all the shows she's been putting on, and to top it off, all my new equipment has been breaking down on me and... Her face froze in horror as the realization dawned on her. Oh, goddess, what if I can't afford to book the preacher? Rarity, I can't afford to get married. What am I gonna do? Bon Bon, calm yourself, said Rarity. I'm sure that it's not that bad. Even if you can't afford the trappings of a pinky planned party, you can still get married in the park by the mayor. That's just it, wailed Bon Bon. The park is booked solid for the next three months. Every chapel within a hundred miles is full up for weeks. A wonderful mayor got called away to Canelot, and no one has seen her in a week. I can't even find a real priest to marry us. Bon Bon slumped to sit amid sobs of defeat. Ah, uh, ah. Uh... Rarity searched for the right words, unsure of what to say. I'll go talk to... some pony and see if they have any ideas. Don't worry about the dresses, dear. We'll work something out. Rarity fled from the smoking remains of Bon Bon's kitchen, leaving the confectioner weeping on the floor. It was late in the evening when Pinky and Lyra arrived back in Ponyville. Along the way, Lyra had shot down nearly every single idea that Pinky had about the wedding. When she questioned Pinky about the reservations, Pinky only said that she was working on something super special and so awesome, it'll make you lose your mind. Oh, don't be silly, said Pinky. I mean, I know that parties are expensive, but a super duper party doesn't cost that much more than a regular party, and this is going to be the most super duper duper party Ponyville has ever seen. Pinky, what makes you think we want all that? asked Lyra. We're both pretty simple ponies, Bon Bon and I. I know you love your parties, but this is a wedding. It's completely different from your normal affairs. Oh, I know that, said Pinky. Don't worry, I got you covered like frosting. As Lyra tried to process the idiom, they came to a halt in front of Bon Bon's Bon Bon's. Ooh, said Pinky. I want some gummy bears. Pinky bounced inside the candy shop through the thin haze of blue smoke that hung in the air. From inside the kitchen, soft sounds of fretting and sweeping filtered out into the shop before the clatter of a broom and the trotting of hooves came to greet them. I'm sorry, said Bon Bon. We're closed. Oh, hello, Pinky. What's wrong? asked Lyra. She looked past Bon Bon into the sparking and smoldering remains of her kitchen. What in the name of Luna happened here? I don't know, sniffed Bon Bon. One minute everything was fine, the next minute everything starts self-destructing around me. She looked up at Pinky. Can I have a minute alone with Lyra? Okie dokie, said Pinky with a smile. I've got things to do, so I'll come back tomorrow with all sorts of new ideas. As the door slammed behind Pinky, the shop bell snapped off the frame and clattered to the ground below. Lyra wrapped her arms around Bonbon bon and softly kissed her head. Her horn twinkled, closing the shutters and locking the doors with a simple nod. Without a word, the light switch twinkled and the shop went dark. Alone at last, Bon Bon fell sobbing into Lyra's arms. Pinky watched as the shop closed up behind her. She couldn't help but feel sorry for Bon Bon and her destroyed shop. She put a hoof to her chin for a moment before her eyes narrowed. With a snarl, Pinky galloped across the city toward Sugar Cube Corner. She was moving so quickly that she blew past Pokey and Hot Cuisine, closing balloons for the evening. Goodness, said the mustachioed stallion. I wonder where Miss Pinkie Pie is headed in such a hurry. She's late for a meeting, said Pokey. Anyway, what do you think I should do? Well, if I were the owner of your establishment, I'd only cater to the paying customers, said Hot. I do realize that Lyra is your friend and a regular customer, but she hasn't even put down a deposit yet. Lyra's not just a friend, said Pokey. She's the first friend I had in Ponyville after I moved here. When I think back to all the things she's done for me. And what has she done for you, sir? Asked Hot. Or Bon Bon, for that matter. What have they done for you? Pokey paused to consider. Lyra hadn't really done anything in particular for him. 
She played for his restaurant on special occasions, but she'd always been paid for that. She was there for him after his disastrous pursuit of Pinkie Pie and numerous other failed relationships. Pokey shook his head. Friends don't have to do anything for you, Hot, he said at last. Just being there is enough, and Lyra's always been there for me. I'm just suggesting that you mind the business side of the business, said Hot. I'd hate to see you go under because you can't keep your occupation and personal life separate. You worry about your job, and I'll worry about mine said Pokey. He glanced over at the wall clock. Look, I gotta go. I'm already late. There's a new wine for you in the kitchen next to the calendar. Let me know what you think of it and if we should put it on the menu. Hot nodded and shuttered the restaurant's blinds. Pokey walked back through his darkened restaurant, thinking about what his waiter had told him. Sure, Lyra hadn't paid him, but she was always good for it and she'd never given any pony reason to doubt her word. Still, the rumors that were starting to surface about Bon Bon and Lyra were reaching a fever pitch. It was as if some pony had flipped a switch in Ponyville to turn all the mares into cackling hens. Everything about those two seemed tainted recently, even to those who had known them forever. He wasn't sure what to make of it. Even with all the rumors and conjecture surrounding the couple, Pokey knew it was truly love, and that the nagging of a few busybodies would do nothing to stop Ponyville's happiest couple from their big day. As the streets passed beneath his hooves, Pokey looked up to the sky to see the moon rising behind Sugarcube Corner. The silhouette of a few ponies hung in the window as some pony, probably Pinkie Pie, set the table in her apartment. It was a few minutes before Pokey found his way upstairs to a motley assembly of Pinkie's closest party ponies. Pinkie was inexplicably wearing reading glasses. Gentle cults, she said, we must stop the Batman. The sea of confused expressions prompted Pinky to look down at her notes again. With a nervous giggle, she slipped the top page off her notes and passed it to Gummy. The alligator scuttled away into the closet and the clatter of a filing cabinet could be heard before he returned to the table. We're here about Lyra and Bon Bon's wedding, said Pinky. Go back to the Batman thing, said Barry Punch. Pinky ignored her and continued. Pokey, if you'd get the lights, Carrot Top has a short presentation. The apartment lights dimmed, and Carrot Top stood to address the ponies as the projector flickered to life. The slide showed a chart correlating months with increasing profits. She cleared her throats before starting to read her notes. One cup of flour, one egg, two-thirds... Carrot looked down at the card again, paused, and shuffled it to the rear of her stack. <clears throat> Around the time that Lyra and Bonbon bon got engaged, Carrot Top continued, business in Ponyville started booming. Bits were coming in from everywhere, and every baker, florist, farmer, and shop owner seems to be doing really well for themselves. The biggest exchange that we've seen thus far is in the service industry. Next slide. The next slide was a picture of Lyra and Bonbon bon sitting in a rowboat. Lyra was serenading Bonbon bon with her leer, and the two floated on the lake beneath the sun. Lyra, as we all know, is nobility, and her engagement to a commoner has provoked ire among the nobles. The projector shuddered again to reveal a diagram of Equestria's political system. The nobility, while not having any real power anymore, still control a great deal of Equestria's wealth. They come from old money and they use that money as influence in events all over Equestria. Carrot Top turned away from the slide to face the assembled ponies. Rarity, if you will? As I'm sure Pokey will tell you, Rarity said, business for all of us has been absolutely astounding. Ponies from all over Equestria have been coming to our little town to do business with us. I only wish I could say it was our style and class that brought them here, but unfortunately, I have reason to suspect it is something else entirely. The projector shuddered again to reveal a picture of Pokey laying on a bed of petals with a rose clenched in his teeth. It shuddered again to reveal another chart. Whoa, wait, said Barry. Go back one, that was more interesting. Where the hell did you get that picture? demanded Pokey. Remember who your friends are, ponies, said Carrot Top. And keep in mind that sometimes what seems like a blessing can actually be a curse. It's really convenient that the whole town's been booming for the past couple of months. Everyone's paying full price, and it seems like a lot of goods are headed out of town. I suspect that the nobility is trying to get us to forget about our friends with the promise of money. I know Lyra hasn't paid any of you yet, continued Carrot Top. From what Rarity has told us, Lyra hasn't gotten paid in three weeks, and there's been some sort of huge catastrophe at Bon Bon's. Sorry, what? asked Pokey. What do you mean? All her equipment was broken, said Pinky. 
I saw all the mixers and pullers and candy makers when I dropped off Lyra. They were all ruined. That's odd, said Carrot Top. She just had maintenance from Canterlot come the other day after she... The table went quiet as the word came to them. Sabotage, said Pokey. It all makes sense now, said Barry Punch. Lyra's getting cheated out of paychecks while they drain Bonbon's finances. They keep all of you distracted with bits, so when it comes time for the two to pay, they can't. Barry Punch punched one hoof to the other. That's pretty insidious. Now I want to find someone to bite for this. What I don't understand is how they would even know about such a thing, said Rarity. Lyra is the only nobility in town, and I'm certain our mayor wouldn't be a toady for some noble. Unless some pony like Twilight Sparkle was behind this, and I can't imagine she would be, I haven't the slightest idea who could be feeding the nobility this information. That's not the most important thing either, said Pinky. The important thing is that they won't be able to get married if they can't afford their wedding. As the group talked about raising money for the couple, Rarity looked out the window into Ponyville. She spotted Lyra and Bonbon bon on the streets, walking slowly toward Sugarcube Corner. Rarity turned away from the window to find Pinkie Pie drawing an elaborate scheme on a flip chart. And then we all place bets on Rainbow Dash to win, and... They were interrupted by a loud knock at the door. The group turned to stare as it swung open, revealing the tear-stained faces of Lyra and Bonbon. Bon. Pinkie told me you were meeting here, said Lyra in an ear whisper. And, uh... I wanted to thank all of you for what you've done for us already. She swallowed hard as she forced the next sentence. But I don't think that we're going to be able to be married any time soon. What? said Pinky. Oh, no, 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 no! Y you can't not get married! This should be the easiest thing you've ever done! With everything that's happened the past few days, we just can't afford to pay you, said Bon Bon. We have so little at the moment that we wouldn't even be able to pay the mayor to marry us at City Hall. She wiped away a tear. So maybe next year, when things are better... You must be joking, said Rarity. As if I'd let such a thing like money get in the way of a love like yours. I'll do your dresses for free. Consider them a wedding gift. Pokey nodded in agreement. Lyra, you and Bon Bon are the most perfect couple I've ever seen. A love like yours comes along once in a lifetime, and if you think we're going to let you stay apart for one day longer than you need to, then you've got another thing coming. Pokey stood from the table. Not only will I cater your wedding, but I'll pay for the priest, too. I'll handle the flowers, said Carrot Top. I'll handle the booze, Barry hiccuped. My private stash, even. And I'll make the cake, said Pinky. Plus, I've still got that surprise. We couldn't possibly ask you for that said Bonbon. Bon. Rarity, your dresses alone are worth... Not another word, said Rarity. I won't take no for an answer, nor will any of us. The ponies all nodded in agreement. Even as the lions circle, we will take care of you. What do you mean lions? asked Lyra. How did you guess that a circus was the surprise? asked Pinky. Shoot, now I'm going to have to come up with something else. Don't worry about it, said Carrot Top. The important thing is that you two get married in spite of it all. Lyra could only smile as tears formed in her eyes. We couldn't ask for better friends than you, she said. I... I don't even know what to say. You don't have to say anything, said Rarity. We'll make sure that you two get your happily ever after. It was two weeks after Pinky's meeting when the Ponyville Chamber of Commerce had its monthly gathering. Every small business owner in town was in attendance to discuss the recent boom in Ponyville's economy, and the rumor was that things were only going to get better as the Grand Galloping Gala drew near. Pokey and Rarity stood discussing some of the aspects of the wedding as the mayor came out to greet the citizens. Business owners of Ponyville, I want to congratulate you all on a fantastic second quarter, she said. Increased traffic through town has contributed to the resounding success of all our businesses in the past few months. The increased traffic is coming from none other than the nobles who have decided our quaint village is the perfect place to rest. The audience responded with polite stomping and clopping of hooves. Joining us today from Canterlot to discuss the recent uptick in business is the Duke of Everfree Providence, Duke Aferio. A blue earth stallion in a tightly curled orange mane took the stage amidst the polite applause of Ponyville's business owners. 
He nodded to the mayor, then to the crowd. My fellow business ponies, he began, on behalf of the nobility, I would like to express my gratitude for the fantastic accommodations and charming atmosphere that your town has to offer. Because of your delightful boutiques and quaint restaurants, Ponyville has earned a place in the hearts of the nobility as somewhere they can go to be pampered and appreciated for their hard work. He paused to allow for more polite stomping and clopping of hooves. However, I must caution you that the nobility tends to be fickle in their favors. While we enjoy the pleasantries of your city, we must caution you that any business that provokes one noble will inevitably find themselves being blacklisted by the rest. A murmur of confusion ran through the crowd as the ponies tried to figure out what he was hinting at. Now I'm sure that won't happen to any of your fine establishments so long as you remember that the nobility has its own traditions and formalities to uphold. Our long line of heritage exists as an example of good grace and respectability to the common pony everywhere. I, for one, am glad that Ponyville has become such a wonderful place to spend my time and bits. I look forward to telling every noble to come here and enjoy all that your wonderful city has to offer. Despite the confusion, the pony stomped and clopped politely as Duke Ferio left the stage. Did he mean what I think he did? asked Pokey. Yes, I heard it too, said Rarity. Any business that caters to Lyra and Bon Bon's wedding is going to be boycotted by the nobility. To be continued.